So it's one of those bad news, good news situations. Bad news? Falcon and Winter Soldier is now over. Good news? That show was actually based upon comic books, so there's still plenty of entertainment to enjoy. But more on that in a moment. Everyone out there, I'm Dan, aka The Comic Concierge, and this is one of my starting points videos. And usually with starting points videos, I'm looking ahead to the new week in comics, picking out ongoing series starting new arcs, new number ones, but that's not what this is. Here I'm looking at the history of Captain America, and picking out different starting points. So if you want to read more about the character, and I mean character in the plural, as there have been a number of different people to don the title of Captain America, these will all be great comics for you to read. And let me explain what this video isn't. This is not a list of the best Captain America comics. Something like Captain America No More, I think is a great story, but not necessarily the greatest place to start reading Captain America. This is designed so whether you're never read a Captain America comic before or a comic book before, these are all comics you can pick up and you don't necessarily need any type of background knowledge. They're all extremely welcoming to new readers. So I'm gonna to try to give you a lot of different flavors and a lot of different styles of the character and characters. So no matter your taste in books, hopefully there'll be something here for you to enjoy, something that will catch your interest. I thought I'd start with a comic book that is getting a lot of attention because of the TV show. I think more attention now than it ever did because of the, the showing up of Isaiah Bradley in Falcon and Winter Soldier, and that's Captain America, Red, White, and Black. This is written by Robert Morales and Kyle Baker. And reading this, I read it for the first time, honestly, recently because of the TV show, and I was just blown away with just how abrasive it was as a comic book, clearly taking inspirations from things like the Tuskegee experiments and other racial undergoings of World War II, and it, it does not hold back. I'm actually surprised Marvel was willing to release this because it's violent at times, it does not necessarily leave any prisoners, and it, it's a very pointed criticism, I think even of Marvel and as well as America during this time. The negative thing with this, though, is that it's kind of hard to find, unfortunately. If you have Marvel Unlimited or Comixology, you, you can find it there and read it digitally. If you want to read it physically, if you hate digital comics, unfortunately, you're kind of out of luck right now. I think I looked at Amazon and you can buy the hardcover for like $900 or even the single issues are really expensive because, you know, speculators be speculating. But hopefully Marvel will see all this attention this book is getting in reprint it in some way or fashion but if you are really interested like i said you don't necessarily have to spend that amount of money you can check out marvel unlimited you can get a free trial or comiXology and spend you know a fraction of that and, and read this book and it's really deserving of it the art style is definitely different i think some people might be a little bit taken back by it but i think allow it to kind of take you in and understand the story that it's telling and i do plan on doing another video specifically on this comic because there's a lot to dive into i'll just say that if there's one comic that would appeal to those that are not really into superhero stuff this one be, would be it this would be the one i would recommend out of all the books i'll talk about today so i thought i'd switch over the focus on steve rogers time as captain america yes even though Steve Rogers was not in this show, his presence was clearly there. And I can't not talk about Captain America and focusing a lot about the man who made Captain America into the, the role that it is. And there are a lot of Captain America books that do talk about his time during World War II. If I was going to recommend one of them, it would be Captain America White, which is written by Jeff Loeb with art by Tim Sale. And this is part of their color series that they've done for Marvel. You know, they had the Spider-Man book, the Daredevil, Hulk, and eventually Captain America White, which was the last one they did. It did take, you know, forever to come out, but eventually it did. And you saw this you know, mission of Captain America and meeting up with Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos for the first time. And that is probably the best part of this book is just the, the back and forth between Fury and Rogers, because you definitely see that I don't necessarily see eye to eye at first. Fury doesn't necessarily buy into this Boy Scout of Steve Rogers. He thinks he's just like this pawn of the, of the you know, military complex, but they get into, you know, form a relationship as they see that, you know, maybe they're into this fight for the same reasons. And love Tim Sale's art. I'm not a huge Jeff Loeb fan, but when he teams up with Tim Sale, just magic happens in the comic book world. And that's the case. Maybe it's Sale just, you know, being able to find what works with his work and utilizing that. So if you're looking into getting into more of Steve Rogers during World War II, this is one I would recommend. One thing you're going to notice with this list is that it's probably much more modern. I'm not going to have a lot of older, older comics because, again, I'm thinking of people that are coming into 
the hobby for the first time or have not read a lot of Marvel or Captain America books. And sometimes those older books are a little bit difficult to get into. That's why you're going to notice a more modern stuff here. So the purists out there that are going to get angry about that, that's the reason why. I will talk about some old books. Don't worry, there will be some Jack Kirby in here. I cannot not talk about Jack Kirby, but unfortunately, just sometimes those older books are certainly written during a certain time and place. If you like these books and you really enjoy them, then maybe go back and read some of the old ones because they're a little bit easier to chew on when you have some experience. At least that's my personal take. But so we talked about Steve Rogers role as Captain America and we're already taking a detour to someone else playing the role as Captain America. And this was a book I actually completely missed and didn't know existed until I started kind of researching this list. And that's Captain America Patriot. This came out in 2010 and tells the story of Jeff Mace, who may not be a name that many people even know about. Again, this is part of the Marvel Knights line. So it's not necessarily in technically continuity it's kind of in between like marvel max which is the adult stuff and regular marvel uh, but ultimately that's not important again this is about jeff mace who was the third captain america based in this story and he started actually as this patriot char character jeff mace has a very similar story to steve rogers where he did try to sign up and become part of world war ii to, to to be enlisted in the army but he was rejected because of medical issues that didn't stop him though although he was homebound he became this character the patriot and dressed up and fought crime and mostly kind of mom bosses and other people that were low time nazi like saboteurs and things like that but eventually he ended up growing in that role and becoming the third captain america after the captain america that replaced steve rogers died and what's really interesting about jeff mace's story is that he is just a normal guy as i mentioned he was men medically rejected and what you see him struggle with responsibility on this role both on a physical sense and on what it represents as well you know when he's tussling with some villains they just notice that, like and make fun of the fact that like well captain america you seem slower you now people catch his shield because he can't throw it as hard as other individuals even namor is it who's a big part of this doesn't necessarily respect him because he's not steve rogers he's not the person that has earned the right to, the, to wear the stars and stripes but you see him you know progress in that role he also struggles with responsibility of the role as well and how it limits what he can do how he can't even go to a friend's funeral because that friend was dishonorably discharged from the army even though it wasn't necessarily for legitimate reason it's also a time and place we don't see a lot of stories really take place you know right after world war ii you know as the cold war is heating up and you have a very different conflict obviously they're not fighting the nazis you know, they're, they're fighting other individuals and i thought it was a great examination on the role of captain america and every facet of it i think you could read this and realize why holding the shield which was a big part of falcon or Winter soldier is what it is it has very similar themes in that way but just in a very different time and place in speaking of time, we have Captain America, Man Out of Time. And really, I could have done a Captain America starting points video just about Mark Wade's run on the character of Captain America because he has so many different stories. You know, he has the Captain America Return story, which you can check out. The, also, the later run he did was Chris Samney, which is fantastic. One of my personal favorite Marvel books over the last few years. But specifically, I'm looking at Captain America, Man Out of Time here. And this takes place right after Steve Rogers is unfrozen from the ice, you know, as the Avengers look down upon him, just realizing that he, in fact, is Steve Rogers. And after they are kind of turned to stone, I don't want to give anything away. He gets lost in New York, you know, Home Alone style, working with Rick Jones to figure out what is happening. He's not believing what is going on, thinking it is some sort of trick or some sort of playing of the mind. And he's getting exposed to New York kind of on his own. And you just see him trying to realize what in the world is happening as this is not the New York he knows and loves. What this does is allow you to see just how much of the world has changed from when Captain America first fell into the ice until now. Just how much the world has evolved and is different. Like one of the first things that happened, he ends up getting attacked because he tries to save someone and it doesn't go necessarily as he expected. And it's it's a lot of that. Him like very much the, the fish out of water story, but Captain America. Mark Wade is one of the best Captain America writers ever. He just really hits the sensibilities of the character. He's also really good at capturing the old as well as the new. So this is a story right in his wheelhouse, and when you have art by Brian Hitch, it's also going to look 
great as well. Most of the Captain America books don't necessarily focus on the man out of time aspect all that much anymore. I mean, by this time, you know, he's been out of the ice for so long, you can kind of understand it. So a book like this is really just a good refresher to realize you know, what that effect can have on a person. It also just has that old school Captain America feel as well. So it may not work for everyone because some of the things do feel a little, a little dated, even though this is a recent comic. But if you really like that take on the character, you're really going to enjoy this story. I could not do this list without at least doing one Jack Kirby take on the character of Captain America. That would be sacrilegious. I did do a video on Captain America number one that you may want to check out. Uh, that could also be a starting point. I mean, that is the very first issue. But something more modern is Captain America Mad Bum. That takes place in Captain America issues 193 to 200. And the story is exactly like it sounds. This Mad Bomb, which is shaped like a brain, goes off in the city of New York and Captain America and Falcon have to try to stop the city of New York from going crazy and killing itself, literally. You know, they have to stop normal citizens who simply can't control themselves from hurting each other. It's a very, you know, delicate situation. It's a very, very challenging situation. It just shows the amazing imagination of someone like Jack Kirby, who clearly took stuff that he learned from doing fantastic Fantastic Four and, and New Gods and brought it into the world of Captain America, a character he knew pretty well uh, before writing this story. And he's written so many great Captain America books, and many would argue this may actually be one of his best, if not his best, take on the character. And what's also really cool about this story is that last year they did a Marvel Snapshots book that touched upon this story, which is kind of a side story that told more of the street level perspective of this. It was written by Mark Russell with art by Raymond K. Perez, and it's a good partnership with this book. I would say you can kind of read that snapshot book without reading Mad Bomb. It would probably help. I actually read it before reading Mad Bomb, and I got it well enough. I actually really love that issue, but reading that and reading this together, you get to kind of the complete picture of, of what happened. And again, even though Captain America is not necessarily in that snapshot story all that much, his presence is there the entire time. We're actually going to talk about now one of my favorite comic book issues of all time, Captain America DOS, which is written by John Nay Niver and art by John Cassidy. This was released around 2003, and this is dealing with the aftermath of September 11th. That's where, you know, the DOS title comes from, you know, coming from the ash of the, the buildings falling. And... You know, this came out obviously very two years after the events, but I think they were still very much within the public consciousness of the time. And they, I know they were when I read it. And to me, they just showed the power of a character like Captain America and very much how he could represent what is right. Uh, unfortunately, I think the series as it went on as a whole kind of in a way went back against a lot of the stereotypes that this issue fought against. You know, a lot of the... Um, negative hate that went towards like Muslims during at the time, but this is a very much a good representation of how we should not go that route. But unfortunately, as this series went on, it felt like it did. But as a single issue, I think it's a remarkable piece uh, about a time that you know has been represented in the comics a lot, especially in Marvel. This to me was one of the best takes on that time. It also is just a great looking book in a lot of part due to the coloring and you know, because you know you have that dust like feel throughout when you do finally see captain america it's just everything he represents everything he can represent there's just that element of hope there you know in, in a time and place when it was really needed so it may not be as effective you know 20 years later after those events but at the time i think it was it still personally stuck with me so maybe i'm overrating it in that sense but i think as a single work it is still really good and again it's very much a one shot it doesn't necessarily need what comes after or what came before it is very much of that time and place and you know if you want to read something that is just putting captain america in a real world event that is outside of the world of world war ii this would be the book i would recommend Switch over to the other side of the spectrum with Captain America, Dead Man Running. And this was a book that I think probably went under the radar because this came out in 2002. And it's actually Captain America working with soldiers in South America. And those soldiers actually end up turning on him because they're looking to kind of make a buck for themselves. And imagine three king kings that obviously took place in Iraq, but this taking place in South America and throwing Captain America into the mix as well. And, and the soldiers maybe are a little bit more evil in that sense. And thinking that this does come out a year after September 11th, a, a comic that sees soldiers in a negative light wasn't super popular, which is why I think this was maybe under the rug a little bit. But 
that's what really makes it interesting in a way, seeing Captain America in this light and outside of the normal setting that we usually seeing him in. This isn't World War II, this isn't America, this is you know a, a, another country and seeing him working against soldiers and, and their ideology compared to his, it's a good kind of juxtaposition of those two worlds, uh, maybe a little bit more heightened. And it also has an art style that I really dug as well. Again, it may not work for everyone. It's very stylized. It's not necessarily something you technically see often in a Captain America book, which is why I liked it. Um, but again, if you want something that's off the beaten path from your normal Captain America stories, if Captain America is a character you typically don't like or like the message that he's portraying, this may actually be a good book to read because I feel like it does a lot to counteract that common take on the character. Before we get into other characters that take on the Captain America role, I have one more story, although it kind of has other people taking the role of Captain America with Captain America the Chosen. And this is another one of those Marvel Knights books. As I'm doing this list, I'm actually really missing Marvel Knights because it's kind of this prestige title where you got an author like David Morrell who wrote Rambo to, to do a Captain America book. And if you know Rambo, obviously things get very extreme with the movies, but the very first movie, you know, is this take on veterans and, you know, and kind of the impact of war, which is kind of what Captain America the Chosen is. It's a very different take on the character of Captain America because Captain America isn't necessarily really in it. It's again about the role of Captain America in, in soldiers in general. It focuses in, on a, a soldier in Afghanistan. What's interesting about this book is that there's a science fiction aspect of the of it matched with a very grounded story. Like this obviously takes place in Afghanistan. These are soldiers that look like real soldiers dealing with firefights that feel real. But Captain America is in this story. It's, it's a hard balance to strike, but it, I thought it did a good job of it. And we rarely see Marvel comics take place in Afghanistan or Iraq. They kind of stick away from it. This is one of the few, despite being very much in this realistic setting, there is a, a bit of a science fiction take on this as well. And despite being what should seem like something at odds, it ends up working pretty well. Cause I think ultimately it's just the story of inspiration that is through and through from the beginning to end uh, centered on Captain America. But I think, what it's really trying to do is shift the focus to, to real soldiers in a way. Again, not necessarily trying to make a political point per se, but just the act of, of these individuals and, and what they're going through and the choices they have to make. So again, this is another book I think would be really good for someone who is not your typical fan of superheroes or, or, or your typical fan of comics in a way, because it's kind of like a superman hero story that you've never really seen before because it's a superhero story that has superheroes in it but they're not at all the focus of the story all right let's take a break from steve rogers captain america and move over to john walker and with john walker you have issues like 323 that is his first appearance that show that he was kind of a d-bag right from the start he's also had his time as captain america but uh, there's also Captain America 354, which is his first appearance as U.S. agent, you know, after the failings of Captain America. But if I'm going to talk about a series that's a great starting point for John Walker, it's actually the most recent U.S. agent series. Again, I know I'm talking about something more recent, but I think it, it's very helpful that it is recent. Uh, and this is written by Christopher Priest, who I think does a good job of approaching a lot of similar topics as the TV show, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and in a lot of ways doing a better job of kind of expanding upon them in, in a way that really you, you, you get when you have a limited creative team compared to an entire TV show. John Walker is one of those characters that's really hard to write well for a long period of time. Him showing up for an issue or two as someone that you love to see punched in the face is one thing, but when you have an entire book surrounding him, that's an entirely different story. And I thought this did a good job of making him more consumable as a character and not necessarily making him more sympathetic, but giving you more understanding of who he is and making him more captivating of a character and less annoying of a character that you just want to see kicked in the face in as much times as possible. Of course, I cannot do this video and not talk about Sam Wilson's time, Falcon's time as Captain America. And looking at the, the best starting point, it would have to be all new Captain America. And this is when he first takes on the role. This is written by Rick Remender with art by Steve Eminen. And Remenders really get into kind of the, the the toll it takes to try to live up to the super soldier, to live up to Steve Rogers. This is, you know, de dealing with the repercussions of the Dimension Z story where Steve Rogers goes to the other dimension and because of a lot of gobbledygook, he ends up becoming old. You're kind of losing the superhero, super soldier serum in a way, and you need someone to replace him. And see a lot of the framework of the TV show here. You don't want your soldiers in here as well. And the back and forth between both of them. It is a little bit more comedic and rivalry is a little bit hotter in, in the 
TV show, but a lot of the same dynamic can be found. I will also say politically, this is not as charged as that per se. Uh, I'll get to another series if you want something along those lines, but I think it does get into just the, the challenge of living up to an icon like Steve Rogers and the challenges that Sam Wilson does go through because of that. So if you really want to see more of that, kind of get the idea of where that part of the TV show is kind of coming from, this would be the series I would recommend checking out. Now, if you want a Captain America book that is much more politically focused, I would advise getting Captain America Sam Wilson. And this took place when Nick Spencer took over the character of Captain America. You had this book, you also had Captain America Steve Rogers going on. And hey, great, we have two Captain Americas, unfortunately. That's when Captain America got his groove back and also decided to be an agent of Hydra because, you know, reasons. And that necessarily didn't go all that well. We're, we're still dealing, dealing with repercussions of that book in uh, Ta-Nehisi Coach's run that's going on right now, which is why I actually didn't bring that into this video because that is a, not necessarily a new reader friendly run compared to some other ones I talked about. And this Captain America Sam Wilson book, though, specifically is very politically charged. It gets into police brutality. Um, this is the idea of protection, uh, the role of the government, uh, race, and pretty much all the key issues that we get in the TV show are brought here. Some may say a, a little clumsy compared to the TV show and other comics. I wouldn't necessarily disagree. There's certainly passion in this book. It's not necessarily the best Captain America story I would advise reading. However, if you want that flavor, if you really enjoy that take on the character and just kind of no holds barred, you know, approach to these important issues, this is probably the most recent book you would get that, that, that takes on that type of story. All right, I'm going to talk about one more Falcon related Captain America story and technically it's not Captain America but hey this is inspired by Falcon and Winter Soldier so why not talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier? No I mean actually the Falcon and the Winter Soldier comic that came out in 2020 a book that I think was a victim of bad timing that was probably designed to come out around the same time as a TV show but because of you know a pandemic things happened and it got really kind of missed by a lot of people, including myself. I did recently catch up with it, and I actually really liked it. This is very much written in the tone and style of the of the cinematic universe. So if you you know you really enjoyed the TV show, this is what I would say is like the downloadable content of the TV show, where it's not necessarily you know to the same level as deep or you know as as well polished, but it's a lot of what you like. And if you want more of it, this this is kind of there for you. And th despite the fact that it was overly missed, now we are seeing it come out in collected form. And again, it's available digitally. So if you're like myself and missed it, I was actually surprised about how, how good it looked as well. The art was you know, pretty on. So this would be the one book I'd recommend if you want something that is as close to the TV show as possible. This would probably be your best bet regarding the all comics I talked about today. Now, I usually end the starting points videos with my pick of the week, the book I am most excited about. So I thought I'd end this video with the book I'm most excited about recommending. The book I think is the best starting point for Captain America because personally biased, that is my starting point with Captain America and it's Captain America, Winter Soldier, the Ed Brubaker, Steve Epting run on the character and came out in 2004. And this is a defining run for the character. Now this is very much the Captain America we know now, you know, again, creating Winter Soldier, redefining the history of the character of Captain America that I think kind of brought him in the forefront in a way. Why I think this is a good starting point for Captain America is because one, it's a fantastic comic series. It's, I think, one of the best Marvel runs period over the last 20 years or so, maybe longer, maybe the best Captain America run of all time. I can't say I've not read enough Captain America to claim that it's my personal favorite, but What's really good about it is that this defines the character of Captain America for this age. The, the Captain America we see in, in the MCU, the Captain America we see in Marvel right now, I think is a reflection of the Captain America that is kind of built up in this series. You know, it looked at his past in a way that really hadn't been in quite some time. Uh, it, it, again, looking at his relationship with Bucky, having the gall galls of bringing back Bucky back, which no one ever thought would ever happen. Not only did they think it wouldn't happen, they thought it would be awful, ended up being fantastic. And it was just consistently great throughout. So I think if I was going to recommend one book, one Captain America book that is both really welcoming to new readers and a fantastic read, it is 100% Ed Brubaker's run on Captain America. I, if I'm being honest, this is a big reason why I'm even doing this video. You know, it's a book that helped me kind of fall in love with comics to that level. You know, it, it allowed me to see how comics can touch upon something as realistic as World War II in, in uh, 
a story that deals with a cosmic cube and it can touch upon things like PTSD and the wars, wars that we deal with today uh, through a character that's dressed up in, in, in stars and stripes. Again, it's not necessarily the first comic to ever do that, but my personal experiences was the first time I've ever, I've ever read it. So that's why it's kind of the thing I'm most excited about ever because I know it was a good starting point because again, it was a starting point for me and I was going into it knowing very little of, about the Marvel Universe at, at that time and place. I just know that I kind of like Captain America as a character. I loved history and when those two things combined, I think it became magic. And again, it's just fantastic. I'm not necessarily breaking new ground here. People, of course, love this run. It's why Captain America Winter Soldier was you know, the second movie we got. But I think I can't not talk about the obvious when I, I love it as much as I do. But now I hope you enjoyed this video. My hope is that for those that wanted to jump into the world of Captain America, you know, in the comic book sense and were worried about all the continuity you need to know or where to begin, that this hopefully answered a lot of those questions. You know, let me know what you're excited about in a reading, if any of these caught your eye that you may try out, or maybe other starting points that I, I, I didn't miss. I know I've read a lot of Captain America stuff, but I've not read everything. So I'm sure there's even better starting points that maybe I didn't mention. I'd love to see them in the comment section below what did you think of falcon and winter soldier how do you think it ended i am recording this before it ended so don't spoil it for me in the in the future i, I appreciate that uh but thank you for taking the time to check this out just remember that comics are for everyone the key is finding the right one until next time keep reading